Okay, welcome back. New Dawn is the program and it's the women's show on New Dawn. And our first guest this morning is perhaps the most important woman in Lagos State. She is the second citizen of the state. I don't know how they do those things, Shola. You will correct me if I'm wrong. Who's second, who's third, you know. But she's the deputy governor of Lagos State. She's second citizen. She's second citizen. And um, she's also doubling as the commissioner for education for Lagos State. It's therefore our pleasure to welcome to the studio this morning, Mrs. Sarah B.C. Shoson, deputy governor, Lagos State of Nigeria. They call her S.B. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Fumi. How are you? I'm, I'm sure. fine. Good morning. How are you tonight? It's been here this morning. You know the best. You know when I saw you the first time? Because I see those pictures <laughs> of you in the papers and we hadn't met before. And I said, number one, she's younger. Number two, she's prettier. <laughs> you know? And I'm not just saying to flatter you. You are much Thank better you looking much. and younger Thank in you flesh. Much. Thank you very much. Right. Shola, do you want to start or do you want me to? I think you should start. Right. This is the first question I'll ask. I mean, I've gone over your your CV, which is very impressive. You're obviously an educator. You know, in this, once somebody once told me that the problem of education is not really education. It's the problem of teachers. That you've got to break it down to what it truly is. That it's not about education problem, but about teaching our children. I mean, education has become a huge challenge in Nigeria. What, for you to start with, were you a born educator? Did you choose to go into that field or did you find yourself there? Well, I won't say I'm a born educator. I choose to be there. Mm -hmm. I discovered that when I wanted to decide what profession to go into, I looked at nursing. I found that I can't stand the smell of blood. Mm -hmm. I ran back. <laughs> I looked into teaching. I found it quite convenient for me mm. that's to bring about changes in life. And with my kind of characteristic traits, mm -hmm. I felt it would be a very good area for me to put in my best. Okay, you put your foot in it. What characteristic traits are we talking about now? Are you, <laughs> you, know, are you just strict or what? It's something like that. Aha. I think I have that. I have Aha. that knack of strictness. And I think we've tasted and a bit of it since we became deputy governor. Are you what way, shall I? I, I understand. I was actually looking through some things I read and I understand <laughs> how firm you have been with ensuring that uh, the private um, um, school proprietors mm. stick to we to just have to. We just have to. So you your strictness should should there. <laughs> what is that policy about? You know, because when it first when it became clear what was happening, at first everybody thought it was a joke. That is one of these governments. You know, people just wake up one day and decide that they're going to make life hell for some people. And then it became clear that they were serious minded about this. And that's your baby. In the first instance, what is that policy about? Why is the why is there a need to shut down certain private schools? The policy has always been there. Mm -hmm. The state government has a policy. If you want to, private people are welcome into all most areas of government. And you want to come into provision of education as a private enterprise. You have to follow that policy. And the policy is that there is a law backing it up. Mm -hmm. There are guidelines of what you have to do. You come to the ministry, they give you the guidelines. And these guidelines have to be followed before you can establish your school. And this is what we are saying. Right. Now, follow the guidelines, the policy of the state government is the establishment of schools. So it means that prior to this time, there were people who were flaunting those guidelines and they were. Oh, getting really? Them. Really? You, you know how people what they are? A lot of them are there just felt that if I don't have anything doing, the next thing for me is just to set up a school. Mm. Whatever structure I have, whether it's a room or two rooms or a plank, a structure that I have plank. Mm -hmm. So that's the way they've been doing it. And not that the state governments have not been doing anything about that. You know the kind of government, especially with our governor emeritus, they've always been giving them notices. Okay. Regularize your school. This is the type of school we want in the states. Mm -hmm. We want qualitative education in a very conducive environment. If you are doing it as a private person, that means you have that money to do it right. And people are paying for this. 
And what the services you are offering people should commensurate with what you are getting. Yeah. So that's what we are saying. I, I, actually, I sincerely think it's a welcome development because I've had issues with the way school structures run. For instance, there's one thing I was talking to you about off the air. The issue about the fact that when you take your child to a private school, you are made to pay a developmental fee to run somebody else's private business. I don't understand that. It has no uh, 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 foundation in my mind. And I think it's an exploitation of the need that the parents have. I need to put my child in a good school. So this person says, well, if you are going to, you have to pay me 100,000 developmental fee to develop the school that is my own private business. The profit comes to me. The, I'm, I'm the full owner or my family owns the business. And then you are making other people fund. I don't know. I mean, I think that's something I think the Lagos state government should look into, seriously. Well, I just want to say the parents, are, uh, they have an issue there as well. Because you are stakeholders in the running of that school. Okay. Without your children being in that school, that school cannot run. Mm -hmm. That school cannot make profit. If you don't want to pay the development, it's a matter of bringing yourself together. I'm meeting with the management of the school. Wanting to know why they collect that. What do you want? And if it's agreeable, you go ahead. And if it's not, you stop paying it. You pay your school fees, the tuition, exactly. and every other thing. Yeah. So why the developmental levy? I, 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 before Shola mentioned, you, you, Shola and yourself mentioned, I, I never thought about that. I actually think that if at all it has to be paid, perhaps that is the way that richer parents can contribute to the education of poorer children. If at all it has to be paid, it can it not be done in such a way that it goes into public education. But the challenge, madam, is this. Often people have, they have argued that the reason why the private um, ed um, education system became so humongous because, in yeah. Nigeria mm -hmm. is because of the total failure of public education. Jack Monday did his bits. The idea then was the functional buildings to be replaced mm -hmm. three, five years with solid buildings. Nobody did that. Mm -hmm. Not until 1999. Uh, and with a Shiro period, okay, yeah. Yeah, he, did try, yeah. he, he did try to put it, but it's like a drop. Mm -hmm. The population of school age children okay. is so much. Mm -hmm. And these states, like you said, the question is San Cruzan, mm -hmm. especially in the Southwest. We believe in education so much. And we believe in making it accessible. I enjoyed the free the education, education policy. Yeah. Of late sage mm -hmm. about family I will work. I hear your father, was, your father was an AG. He so still he, he, he <laughs> still won. <laughs> he still won. He's over seventy five now and he's still very And you know why I mentioned that point? Because your father was a top politician yes. and you were allowed to go to public schools in those days. Because the public schools were good enough. Good enough yes. yes. These days how many politicians' children will go to public They are schools? still good for me. Because mm -hmm. in public schools we have the professional teachers, they are trade. Mm -hmm. It is only the structures and which are being improved upon. And the demand there was not as high what as this. Yeah. I went to primary school in the 60s. You did? Yes, I did. <laughs> you don't look it? I did. Uh -huh. And then the demand was not as high as this. The but isn't that was one of the challenges that, you know, planning, because even this education structure uh, re re reform, mm. shouldn't it go hand in hand with so many things? Like Suji said in that article, along with economic reform, including population mm -hmm. reform. Because, yes. I mean, I yes. also feel, I, even though I'm a strong supporter of even I don't want to educate I mean, I mean, 10 like. children from the same father. <laughs> well, isn't that irresponsible of one person to put 10 children on the, state, the neck of the state? So, But what do you do? You can't turn them back. You can't say it's true. As long as that can't child is born, yeah. Yeah, and even from all over the states, all over the states, people yeah, send yeah, that they're they're going they're to Lagos. You can't drive them back mm -hmm. because everybody see Lagos. We say Lagos is the engine room of mm -hmm. Nigeria. Yeah. The free education policy, yes, we accept everybody, but even in doing that, our teachers, like I said, mm -hmm. we have the best today. Even in the Things are happening. In most science and uh, technology aspects, our children come out tops. They are the winners just recently mm. in the House of Commons. Mm. One of our yes. students. Oh, yes, I read about the first, that. Yes. yes the two of them travel. A girl and the boy traveled. Really? And they are from public school. Yes. yes. The national, the teachers' competition that 
Tabri, Mavi Tanomadi, mm -hmm. every yeah. year. A teacher from a public school, Mrs. Elino Suba, won the best teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so how does one? I know now that, as you have said, and I agree with you because I have seen it. You know, I am interested in education, and I see the progress. But it, for looking at it, you know, I think it requires what I call creative anarchy. In terms of, it's true. <laughs> creative that's anarchy. creative anarchy. What I, 